Hello and welcome to my review for the first episode of the BBC's new series, Asia. So this is the first series since Africa to deal with a specific continent. Obviously we had Seven Worlds, One Planet, where every episode dealt with a different continent, but this is the first in-depth look at Asia. And compared to other continents like Africa or the Americas, Asia has a lot of stuff that I think we know less about. It's obviously the largest continent, but it also has the most on it and the most diverse habitats. So I think if we're going to have a series based on any continent, Asia is probably the most logical choice. But we open up with David Attenborough, and he gives us an overview of what we can expect from the series. So this episode is called Beneath the Waves, and it deals with the coasts and the oceans surrounding the continent of Asia. So the first proper sequence we get features Moorish Idols. So Moorish Idols are a species of fish which I think we all recognise. I think they're a pretty iconic looking fish. Obviously, Gil in Finding Nemo, he is a Moorish Idol, but they're an animal that we don't really know anything about. I couldn't tell you a single thing about a Moorish Idol, other than that I know that's what it is. So I think that was a really interesting way of opening the series. And we see that all these Moorish Idols leave the reef and they gather in big groups in order to give their young the best chance of survival. They have to go properly far out of the reef and that attracts the attention of sharks. So we see all these grey reef sharks following them and it's quite a large, you know, collection of Moorish Idols, but they're definitely outnumbered by the number of sharks that was there. We basically get the Moorish Idols running the gauntlet against the sharks. So they're basically having to just outswim them and eventually rely on the fact that the sharks will just be full. Uh, by the end, there's only nine Moorish Idols left in this show, but the ones that do survive are the strongest and the ones that are able to reproduce. So that's a very interesting opening sequence. So we spend the next part of the episode following the Indonesian through flow, which is a very strong current that basically goes through Indonesia and basically around the southern end of the whole continent. We see a lot of whirlpools. We see that it's very good for manta rays. It drums up nutrients for a lot of plankton, which in turn attract manta rays. The manta ray sequence is cool. It's nice to see manta rays. They're always nice to see. I like the bit when they were getting cleaned by fish. I feel like that's not something I see very often from manta rays. Um, but the, them just eating the plankton, I've seen before. Yeah, but it was still nice to see. Then we move to the mangroves, which I always like. And here we see mudskippers. So mudskippers are another animal that I think we all kind of know what it is. But we don't really know that much about them. We don't see them too often. And we basically just see them living their lives. They build their little burrows. They climb trees. They jump from them. They fight. It's all nice. Again, I think I'd seen this in life. But that was 2009. So, you know, we're about a decade and a half after that. So, you know, it's it, we're, we're due to see them again, I think. And it was a nice sequence. Again, I like the mud skippers. They're kind of funny. They look funny. They act kind of funny. Them just jumping around is kind of funny. Then we leave the coast for the open ocean and the Indian Ocean. And here we see sperm whales. So sperm whales, I like sperm whales. I think since Blue Planet 2, we've had more sperm whale sequences. Uh, here we basically see this one sperm whale calf. It's just playing around with bits of mangrove. And it's watching its parents sleep. And it's basically copying their behaviour with varying degrees of success. It's quite a fun sequence. I, I like that as well. Um, again, it's not the strongest longest sperm whale sequence I've ever seen in my life, but it's just nice, it's a nice little wholesome sequence, and I think sperm whales do lend themselves to that, they're nice animals that live in family groups, so that's always nice. And then we talk about shipping lanes, so a large volume of ships will travel towards the Suez Canal, into the Mediterranean, and here we see that there's an Israeli plant which is pumping all this warm water out, and this is great for dusky sharks, probably because the warmer water speeds up the development of their young. Then we go to the other side of the continent, where we see this one island where there's a large population of northern fur seals. And here we see all these male fur seals just battling out over females. Well, I think this sequence did a really good job of was being a very honest portrayal of nature. It's pretty hard to watch. You see all these pups getting crushed by the males. And I think they showed a lot more than they normally would. We see all the pups injured. Some of them are dead. The mothers are comforting the bodies of their dead pups. Uh, it's pretty hard to watch. And we also see that when the fur seals leave the beach and go to water, they're attacked by orcas. And we don't dwell on the orcas too much. I think it'd be easy to focus a lot on the orcas. I think this whole sequence was very good because it's quite depressing, it's quite bleak, but not because of any environmental reasons. It was just because that's just nature. It reminded me of what I liked about planet Earth, how it felt like a very honest portrayal of nature at its most harsh. That's not something we get very often nowadays, so I really appreciated that. Then we talk about the deep sea, how there's all these deep sea animals. Uh, we don't spend a lot of time there, we just see the these weird things knocking about. It's quite cool. We do spend quite a lot of time with Firefly Squid. The bioluminescence looks great. They look really cool on screen. I like how they have kind of green pigmentation, which only the squid can see. Not many other animals in the ocean can actually see green. Weird. And we see them spawn and they all get washed into the beach and die. It is something we've seen before in other species, but not really in squid. And we end that sequence talking about how their young will sink back to the depths and in a year's time they will also repeat the same thing, spawning and dying. And then we move to probably one of the most iconic things about the Asian coast, which is the coral triangle. And here we see the sea bunny. So the sea bunny is an animal that I hadn't really heard of before. It's basically a sea slug and it's kind of a comedic sequence. We basically see it travelling through the coral and trying to find food. Uh, we talk about all these animals just won't eat it, even though it's a fairly easy target. And we talk about how it eats this sponge that's very toxic. 
so no other animals will eat it. It's not an animal you see very often, and it was quite funny. And the last major bit of footage involves the sea crates. So sea crates are basically going around the reef looking for fish, but they're not very fast, even though they can get into the little crevices. So they rely on trevally, which are the opposite. They're very fast, but they can get into the crevices. And we see that all these trevally and all these sea crates will band together to feed together. We did see that in Planet Earth, but this is a much more in-depth look at that. At first I was kind of like, okay, I've seen this before, but I did actually appreciate it by the end, how much of an in-depth look we got at that. And while I think it's a weird way to end the episode, because it's not a big epic spectacle, it did feel kind of nice. And the diaries was all about the people filming the Indonesian through flow. It did look like quite a dangerous shoot. You could tell there was nerves involved in this, uh, and it was quite good as well. Not the best diaries I've ever seen in my life, but it was, it was still alright. So yeah, I like that. Overall, this episode is pretty good. It's a good intro to the series. I do think that other episodes will probably be better than this. But no, this episode's still pretty good. My highlights were probably the Moorish idols and the sharks at the beginning. Uh, the Sfer Seals I really liked, the ending with the secrets I also liked. So yeah, there's stuff in here that's quite good. It's quite, it's quite a good episode overall. So yeah, what did you think of this episode? Let me know in the comments below. Uh, I will be continuing to do my Asia reviews uh, every week, so look forward to that next week. Um, yeah, uh, feel free to like, comment and subscribe, or don't if you don't want to. It's fine. Um, I'll see you next week, and goodbye.